Now let's say if we have the graph of y equals x squared. Now let's focus on the right side of the graph. How can we calculate the area under the curve from let's say 0 to 8? So how can we determine the area of the shaded region? Now, one simple way in which we could do so is by using rectangles. So let's use rectangles. Let's actually use four rectangles to approximate the area. And there's two ways you can do so. You could use a lower sum, in this case, which will be the left endpoints, or an upper sum, which would represent the right endpoints for an increase in function. So if we're going to use four rectangles, n is equal to 4. And so we're going to break this up into four subintervals. Now using the left endpoints, the first rectangle is going to be at 0, so it doesn't have any height. The second rectangle, when x is 2, is going to touch the curve. And then the next one, when x is 4, is going to touch the curve, and it looks like that. And then when x is 6, and you can see this is going to be an under approximation. It's less than the actual area under the curve. Now to calculate the area of each rectangle, we need to multiply the width of each rectangle by the height. So we can see that the width is the same, but the height will vary. And we need to do it for every rectangle in this picture. So we could come up with a process that will help us to do so. So the area under the curve is equal to, it's going to be the width of each rectangle, that's uh, delta x, which we could see that delta x is 2, times the height. The height is basically the y values, or the function values, at some particular sample point. The sigma notation tells us that we need to find the sum starting from 1 to n, where n is 4. So basically, we have to find the sum of the area of each rectangle. So delta x represents the width of the rectangle, and f of x represents the height of the rectangle. So the width times the height will give us the area. Delta x is equal to b minus a divided by n. Now, a is basically the first point that we see here on the left side. So a is 0. b represents the last point. So b is 8. So we want to find the area from 0 to 8. That is from a to b. So delta x is going to be b minus a, 8 minus 0. And we have four rectangles, or four subintervals, so n is 4. 8 divided by 4 is 2. And we can clearly see that delta x is 2 units long. Now, if we wish to calculate the area of each rectangle, so when x is 0, 0 squared is 0, the height is 0. When x is 2, the height is going to be 2 squared, so that's 4. When x is 4, the height is going to be 4 squared, or 16. And then when x is 6, the height is going to be 6 squared, or 36. So width times height, the width for each rectangle is 2. 2 times 4, that will give us an area of 8 for the second rectangle. For the third one, 2 times 16 is 32, and for the last one, 2 times 36 is 72. Now, 8 plus 32 is 40, 40 plus 72 is 112. So we should get an area of 112. But let's come up with a process that can help us to do so efficiently without actually drawing a picture. So the area using the left endpoint is going to be delta x times the sum of all the y values. So we only have four subintervals, so we need to add four y values. So this is going to be the first one, x sub 1, plus the second one, x sub 2, plus the third one, x sub 3, and the fourth one, x sub 4. 
So what are these x values? How can we find these x values? Well, let's create a number line. From A to B. So from 0 to 8. And there's four sub-intervals, which means it's going to be five points. So this is the first sub-interval. This is the second, third, and fourth. Now, we need to use four of the five points. Since we're using the left endpoints, let's start with the left side. So the four points we're going to use is 0, 2, 4, and 6. So then the area, using the left endpoints, is going to be delta x, which is 2, times f of 0 plus f of 2 plus f of 4 plus f of 6. Now f of 0, that's going to be 0 squared, so that's 0. f of 2 is 2 squared, which is 4. And f of 4 is 4 squared, that's 16. And f of 6 is 6 squared, which is 36. Don't forget, the function is y equals x squared. So f of x is x squared. Now 4 plus 16 is 20. 20 plus 36 is 56. And 2 times 56 is 112. So this is the approximation of the area using the left endpoint. Now keep in mind, this is an under approximation since we have all of this empty space unused. So the real answer is going to be greater than 112. Now let's approximate the area using the right endpoints. So first, let's draw a picture. And so we're going from 0 to 8. Now let's make four intervals. Now, when drawing the left endpoints, we started with the left point and went to the right. So at the left endpoint, we made sure that that point touched the curve. And then we drew a line to the right. So at 4, you draw a line from 4 to the curve. And then just draw the rectangle, go to the right. So at 6, draw a line from 6 to the curve, and then go to the right. So that's how you can show the rectangles using the left endpoints. Now, for the right endpoints, what you want to do is start with the right endpoint, touch the curve, and then go to the left. So for 6, you want to start where 6 touches the curve, and then go to the left. So at 4, you start where... 4 touches the curve and then go to the left. So you can see that this is going to be an over approximation. So the answer that we get using the right endpoints is going to exceed the actual area under the curve. So this is known as an over approximation or an upper sum. Using the left endpoints, we got an under approximation or a lower sum. Now for the right endpoints, we're going to choose 4 of the five points. So we're going to choose the four points on the right. So that's 2, 4, 6, and 8. We're not going to choose the point on the left, which is 0. And that's going to give us the over approximation. So the area using the right endpoints is going to be delta x times the sum of all the heights of the rectangles. So that's going to be f of 2 plus f of 4 plus f of 6 plus f of 8. So delta x is 2, 2 squared is 4, 4 squared is 16, 6 squared is 36, 8 squared is 64. Now from the last example, we know that 4 plus 16 plus 36 is 56. 56 plus 64 is 120. And 2 times 120 is 240. So this is the area that we get using the right endpoints when n is 4. Now let's go ahead and average the left and the right endpoints 
the area for those values. So the area for the left endpoints we said was 112, and for the right, it's 240. So let's add them up and divide by 2. 112 divided by 2 is 56. 240 divided by 2 is 120. 56 plus 120 is 176. So when you average the left and the right endpoints, you're going to get an answer that's closer to the real answer. Now, to get the real answer, we need to calculate the definite integral. The area under the curve from 0 to 8 for f of x, where f of x is x squared, is going to be the integration from a to b, f of x dx. In this case, it's going to be from 0 to 8, x squared dx. And that's going to give us the exact answer for the area under curve. So we just got to evaluate the definite integral. The antiderivative of x squared is x cubed over 3, evaluated from 0 to 8. So this is going to be 8 to the third over 3 minus 0 to the third over 3. 8 times 8 is 64, and 64 times 8 is 512. So it's 512 divided by 3, which is approximately 170.67. So as you can see, the average and the actual answer are very close. The left endpoint, which is 112, it's much less than the actual answer. And the right endpoint, 240, is much higher than the actual answer. But if you average them, you can get a good approximation for the area under the curve. Now, what's going to happen if we increase the number of rectangles from 4 to 8? What's going to happen to the accuracy of our answer? If you increase the value of n, the area using the left endpoints and the right endpoints, the Riemann sums, it's going to be more accurate. It's going to be closer to 170.67 as n increases. As n approaches infinity, then the Riemann sums approximation will become equal to the actual area. So let's go ahead and get the answer. So let's calculate the area using the left endpoints. So let's make a number line. So from A to B, that's from 0 to 8, we need 8 subintervals. So we can see that the width of each rectangle is going to be 1. So to calculate delta x, it's going to be b minus a over n. So b is the last point in the number line, that's 8. A is the first one, and n is 8. So 8 divided by 8 is 1. Now, which points should we use to calculate the area using the left endpoints? There's a total of 9 points. We need to use 8. So we're going to use 8 points starting from the left. So that's going to be from 0 all the way to 7. We're not going to use the last endpoint on the right. So the area is going to be delta x times the sum of f of x going from, in this case, I guess we could say 1 to 8. But x sub 1 is really this number. That's the first x value. This is x sub 2. So x sub 8 is really 7. So just keep that in mind. This is x sub 9, which we're not going to use. So delta x is 1. And then it's going to be the first one. x sub 1 it has a value of 0. x sub 2 has a value of 1. And then x sub 8 is equal to 7. So it's going to be 0 squared plus 1 squared plus 2 squared, which is 4, plus 3 squared, which is 9, 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25, 6 squared is 36, 7 squared is 49. 
Now let's go ahead and add up these values. So 1 plus 9, that's 10. And 4 plus 16, that's 20. And then 25 plus 36. 20 plus 30 is 50. 5 plus 6 is 61. And then if we add 10 and 20, that's going to be 30. 60 and 40 is 100. And 9 plus 1 is 10, so that's 110. So we're going to get 140. So the area using the left endpoint when n is 8 is 140. Keep in mind, when n was 4, it was 112. So 140 is closer to the true answer of 170.67 than 112. So we could see that the left endpoints, the area using left endpoints is approaching the true answer of 170.6 as n increases. Now let's use the right endpoints. So first, let's create a number line. So from 0 to 8, we're going to use the points on the right. So we're not going to use the first point on the left. So we need to use 8 of the nine points that we see here. So to calculate the area using the right endpoints, it's going to be delta x, which is 1, times the first one, which is f of 1, plus the second point, f of 2, all the way to the last point, f of 8. So f of 1, 1 squared, f of 2 is 2 squared, that's 4, and then 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, and 8 squared, which is 64. So we already know that from 1 to 49, that's going to be 140. If we add up these seven values, because we did that already, that's going to be 140 and then plus 64. So that's 204. Now let's organize the information in a table. So this is going to be the area using the left endpoints and the area using the right endpoints. And this is going to be the average of the area for the left and the right endpoints. And this is going to be the actual answer. So when n was 4, the area using the left endpoints was 112. And for the right endpoints, it was 240. And when we average those two numbers, it was 176. And the actual answer is 170.67. Now, when n is 8, the area using the left endpoints is 140. Using the right is 204. And then if we average those two numbers, One forty divided by two is seventy. Two hundred four divided by two is one hundred two. So this adds to one seventy two. So as n increases, notice that the area using the left endpoints it's increasing towards one seventy. And the area using the right endpoints it's decreasing towards one seventy point six seven. It went from two forty to two hundred four. And notice the average, comparing n equals 4 and n equals 8. The average is approaching 170.67. It went from 176 to 172. So as n increases, the accuracy of the approximation increases. So hopefully this video gave you a good introduction into Riemann sums and how to approximate the area under the curve using the left endpoints and the right endpoints.